Welcome to the Digging Deeper Podcast, brought to you by New Hope Church. My name is Matt, and I'm so very excited to dive into today's topic. Before we get there, though, let's go around the room and see how everybody's doing. Nate, how you doing, buddy? Not great. Not great. Yeah. That is yeah. fair. Sorry, man. That is how I'm doing. Uh, yeah, getting kicked while I'm down, it feels yeah. like, and yeah. uh, even following this, another crappy meeting. So, uh, yeah, I'm mm-hmm. glad I had Sunday. Yes. Trying to uh, hold yeah. on to that. I know mm-hmm. we're going to share a bit about that, but hold yeah. on to that joy. But, man, it's been work this week especially but in the last few just to retain my joy it's been mm. uh harder than it should be so yeah outside of that yeah. i'm glad i'm on this podcast <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad you're on this podcast. and i love all you guys that's so. right it's just <laughs> nice being in the same space so that's too. Good. absolutely sarah how you doing i am doing great yeah um <laughs> yeah the yeah i'm worried about date and yeah, the other fair. people and some things that are going on but like yeah just uh just feeling so privileged to mm. be able to be part of a church where it feels like we're in the book of Acts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like nobody gets that. I mean, some people do, but like not a lot. And I just can't believe I get to be here. So yeah, yeah. that's good. Absolutely. Jay, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing really good. Hard to do great when your best buddy's not doing great. So. Truth. <laughs> so, yeah, truth. Oh, but, I see uh, the empathy in this room. <laughs> yeah. I really am bringing the podcast down. No, no, yeah, no. no, no man. Bear no. one another's burdens. That's yeah. right. So yeah. fulfill the law yeah. of Christ. Absolutely. Yes. Love it. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. but I'm doing. I am doing good. I uh, obviously Sunday was incredible to be a part of, and and man, emotional mm. all over the place. No like so word, cool yeah. to see. Uh, and then to this week, I, I feel like I, it's a blast from the past for me. I'm teaching at the YOM community Galatians and it, it just feels so energizing and fun to be doing that. So yeah. yeah. That's and then I have someone from my church in, in Vancouver when I was there, they're visiting. Oh my oh, word. So cool. They're going to come see the church today oh, and fun. come over for dinner. So oh, that's be beauty, good to, to see them. Yeah. yeah. So good, man. Yeah. So good. Glad to How hear about it. you, Maddie? How you doing? Yeah. Uh, I a mixed bag, man. Like really awesome stuff. Sunday was amazing. Uh, so good. Um, and then, yeah, just all the daily stuff for wading through and walking through. And like I say, you know, with the stuff Nate, you're wrestling through, it's like, holy smokes, here's the, here's the tension of being both sad, angry, and joyful all the same <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like it, yeah. And this yeah. is the tension we live in. Yeah. Um, and yeah. it's, you know, it is, uh, it's one of those humbling honors of walking with God when you go, you know, I can both be so incredibly blessed because yes, we are actually living out Acts 2. It feels like it. But then you're also seeing, I think, probably the other side of Acts 2, mm. the tension and the stress and the persecution. Yeah. And, you know, so we live out yeah. Acts 2, but we live it holistically. <laughs> yes. uh, you know, Not right? just like, the first part. Yeah, uh, that's right. You know? Yeah, and, uh, that's good, Matt. But it's good because it, I think it further, there is an opportunity for us to further deepen our faith in it in the midst of it. And I think we need those high highs because of the persecution mm. that comes with it. So mm. yeah. So mixed bag doing well, but there's a lot there to process and unpack. So, okay. but I do actually want to spend some time uh, today unpacking Sunday because Holy smokes, that was quite a, that was quite a service we had there. Um, what is the count? Like somewhere around 1400 people. I think we had. Yeah. They, they struggled to count. Yeah. I, God I, bless I our connect team <laughs> who tried guys. to count yeah. a massive mob of moving children. And that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. So yeah. glad you didn't ask me to count. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw you at the top of the hill and I'm they like, were Oh around, no, we're not going to count. They, they, there was like 1300 or 1350 to mm-hmm. 14. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's pretty incredible to have us all in one spot. Yeah, so that was really cool. I want to, I just want to have you guys unpack this a little bit. So I want to throw some questions at you. And, um, the first one is actually just to give a little background as to the why. Uh, you know, why in the world would we do an outdoor service? What's the reasoning and the logic that brought us to this decision? Because it's a lot of work. Go yeah, ahead, I can Nate. go real quick and probably answer that for all of us. We, we mm-hmm. One of our strategic goals was community mm-hmm. and four services. We're, we're still shocked that people say, we're such a tight-knit, joyful community. Yeah. We're like, we're at four services and we're 1,300 people. How do people feel that? Yeah. But that's the mm-hmm. Holy Spirit and yep. praise God for that. This mm-hmm. life groups, that's all the hard work we do. Mm-hmm. But this was an effort to bring us together as one community, mm-hmm. to feel as one yeah. um, and to, to be there. The other part of that is to be out in the world worshiping. Like right. mm-hmm. some days it, you do feel like we're in our safe little box here on mm-hmm. the corner of Riker mm-hmm. and First Street Louth. And then some days you're like out in the world mm-hmm. worshiping. Um, and mm-hmm. I know many people in Port Deluzi that heard our worship, you mm-hmm. know, yeah, and we're like, oh, crazy. something's going on over there. So, yeah. so that's the other, other piece to bring our church together for, for yeah. that idea. Yeah, Absolutely. What were some of the biggest highlights for you guys? <sighs> I know this is a long list, so do your best. <laughs> Sarah, what'd you start us out? Yeah, I think for me, I had sort of the zoomed in view. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was getting to walk with so many of those people as they prepared to be baptized and, uh, 
get to enter in or hear parts of their story. And I'm just, I'm just so excited for everyone to hear <laughs> more of their story than those few little teasers mm -hmm. uh, Nate and I were able to give before they were baptized. But it, that's just an awesome privilege to get to see the work that God has done in so many of their lives in so many different ways uh, yeah. that, that the Holy Spirit has done his work in them. And so many stories of like, only like if you're just being purely logical, it's like the Holy Spirit is the only logical explanation yeah. for some of the things that have happened in their lives and no spoilies, but I can't wait for you to, <laughs> for you to hear more. Um, yeah. yeah. So for me, that was a big highlight. Awesome. Jay, what are we, buddy? Uh, a big highlight was just being together mm -hmm. all in one spot at one mm -hmm. time, for sure, for me. And just seeing that and feeling that one voice as we worship mm. together yeah. was, was super cool. Um, the huge sacrifice that many people made to get up at super early and yeah. come and put everything together. The tech team, man, God bless their patience and <laughs> trying to get that thing working yeah. and then all the people who are serving in kids church who like you know sacrificed being mm -hmm. with the great big, yeah. big group just kind of participating in the actual worship service they were worshiping god by serving yeah mm -hmm. and so those are really cool but then of course like man just i've never seen 25 people get baptized before in yeah one, in one never. thing so Seriously. for me that was like a little taste of Acts chapter two, man. Mm. Like, holy, it was so. <laughs> yeah, There's so a couple of moments where Jay and I actually would like look at each other, <laughs> <laughs> and, like while worshiping over the people, and go like, "What is happening? Yeah, like, right. who, yeah. who are yeah. we? This is insane." So, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's good. Nate, what about you, buddy? Yeah, I got a couple. The weather is one. Like I argued, mm. I had a good argument with God. Yeah. You know, uh, the night before. <laughs> yeah. People call that praying. I called it arguing. That's right. Yeah. yeah like yeah. just going like, "Listen, we've you done our help. part. I can't control the weather, but you can. So, right. yo, could you do what you?" <laughs> and I uh, showed up, man. God just really oh, blessed us that way. Seriously. I agree with J25 is insane. I was really encouraged by the young mm. men. I think that yeah. just, man, this is the future of our church, these young people. Mm. And I can't wait to, for them to lead me. I'm so mm. excited for mm -hmm. watching them grow and then being able to support their leadership and then actually receive from mm. them yeah. in the future. Uh, the dads and moms committing themselves to, in front of their kids. And, yeah, you know, the, it, uh, Bart and Pete and Rob, like some of the people that I'm journey with i felt like i should have a cigar and go like i love it when a plan comes yeah. together <laughs> we have the, we have the a team as a staff but That's also right. our volunteer leaders oh the word. people like the people just showed up there's like you're the exact guy who drives the water truck who can fill our baptism tank and you of course he's there right on time at 7 a.m ready to do it like yeah. it mm. just came together so well mm. and then the last part i think is the coolest is uh for me or one of the coolest was um sebastian the parks manager guy yes. who was yeah. taking care of the park uh he thought it was so like i met him in the morning and he could be a real jerk right could make our life you know turn the volume down you can't do this you can't do that instead he goes this is amazing and yeah. as soon as we did rehearsal for music he text his brother and said, get over here. So he brother got in the car, drove from Beamsville so they could worship at the top of the hill together. Mm -hmm. And now yeah. he's going to come to young adults. Which and is, uh, I just feel like we are fungus. Yeah. Yes. We grow we'll on grow people. Grow. And, uh, I just love it. <laughs> yeah. New slogan. Yeah. New, new slogan. Yeah. Security like guard. Security, security guard, guard at the regional that's committee right. meeting. Okay, now she attends here. Let's yeah, let's go out to another place. I think we just need to go out more. Yes, that's it. Absolutely. So, what about um, you, buddy? Yeah. Oh, man. So for me, it was the... Um, it was seeing the effect community has on people, right? I, mm. um, you know, I had the opportunity to get in the tank with uh, my buddy Jesse, and he was in that tank because of community, love Jesus, mm. and I, I just like his story is insane, and I can't wait for people to hear his testimony. But, but he's only there because his life group consistently came around him and spoke mm -hmm. truth in his life. Because that was just one. Uh, another one for me that was so incredible was seeing um, some of our seniors who have journeyed long. Uh, mm -hmm. the road of following Jesus. So yeah. I've had some hard knocks in tears, arms open, praying over these people that are being baptized yeah. and just going, man, like, you know, that's what I want to be when I grow up. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, you know, and then the the final one was seeing another, another gentleman who um, there's been a lot of prayer hmm. for him. Yeah. And uh, it was community that's brought him out. He served his guts out. Um, and I mean, he, he kicked me out of jobs uh, to take <laughs> over and go, no, yeah. no, you do something else. I can do this, you know? Yeah. But it was because people have been intentionally investing in him and yeah. loving him into the kingdom. And uh, so, yeah, I, for me, seeing that baptism service was just seeing the effect of mm -hmm. kingdom community. Mm -hmm. um, so I was very encouraged by that. Mm -hmm. So it was really good. Um, but uh, yeah, one of the, one of the other parts about managing and building and designing and 
executing a service like this? Is there some hurdles to overcome? Mm -hmm. What were some of the big challenges for you guys as we did this? Yeah, Sarah, go ahead. You got your hand well, up, ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> well, we there were children, you see, and the service was rumor. long. Yeah. And uh, praise God for uh, fencing. And uh, you know, it, 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 but but in all honesty, you know, when we're planning this service and the goal is to come together as one church, mm -hmm. I was really like, it's gonna if if we do childcare. Yeah. We're asking 50, 60, like how many of our volunteers to go over by that playground way over there and totally be not part of it. And that was, I, I didn't want, I didn't want to see that happen. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, Nate came up, came up with a great idea of putting them where they were. And so they could at least kind of be there, be part of the service, have mm -hmm. it just for smaller kids. And so I was really thankful for that innovation because it allowed those people who sacrificed a lot to at least hear the worship maybe observe with our eyes the baptisms and just hearing them, they were so happy to have been able to serve and like yeah. have that sacrifice. And I'll speak for my other half and the other hurdle obviously is the tech. Um, that's just a lot, but everything came through. And if Pastor Toby was here, he'd tell you that same thing too. And, and, and I will turn this hurdle into actually probably my personal highlight was like Thursday night, the band had a practice. And so Dave and I walked over and he's doing sound for the practice and our kids are biking around inside the sanctuary. Awesome. Um, and, As uh, they should. you know, and then we got to go to the, go there together and I got to help Dave set up and it was just a cool moment of like, he and I usually serve together, not together. And we got to yeah. serve like yeah. together. And that's always a really special thing when he and I get to do that together. So mm, that's cool. Personally, that was nice. Cool. Nate. Yeah. Uh, 25 baptisms yeah. is a hurdle, yeah, uh, a blessing uh, and a yeah, challenge. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, like, you know, not sharing their testimonies is kind of a, a yeah. feels like for me, I, that's a part of, um, that I actually believe it is biblical is yes. a spiritual battle by speaking the word yes. of your testimony. And so we still film them all and I'm excited to share them, but that, that's kind of sucked. Uh, the beach yeah. closing, mm. like, and the fact that there was no beach somehow, it got washed away or something on the right hand side. So yeah. like, you're like just a, a, environmental hurdles and you're jumping mm. through this logistically moving 1400 people from one spot to another spot to get their kids to see it. Like, yeah. So some of those things that we thought would be, you know, in my, our mind, this would be like this. And then all right. of a sudden you play it out, you go, Oh, we can't do it. Or it yeah. just isn't realistic. So yeah. uh, some of that, I, I think outside of that, you know, I heard the washrooms were a real hurdle. <laughs> <laughs> I experienced those washrooms as a real Smell hurdle. Smell-wise, they were rough. Many people appreciate New Hope Church. Yeah. You know, so. Our washrooms yes. are very well kept. The smell was so Thank horrible. You, Ashton, oh, and, the and it just team. progressively got worse as the day went. But anyway, that was good. Jay, what about you, buddy? I think I think always when a huge plan like that that Im involves so many different moving parts. Yeah. Not only in the organizational piece, but then also in the execution. You know, like trying to cross communicate with cars and parking and where. Like we kind of assumed where people would be walking in, mm -hmm. but then it kind of ended up being oh, actually most of them are coming on this way, and so mm -hmm. just like constantly being flexible and trying to respond to yeah. way things are happening, make sure yeah. everyone's on the same page, checking in, make sure no one's like freaking out or has no support. Just always kind of keeping hand on those kinds of things that, mm -hmm. you know, it, sometimes it doesn't take much for someone to get really discouraged yeah. and, le and leave unhappy, you know? So just trying to stay completely unified, communicating well, Walkie talkies is always helpful for those kinds of things. <laughs> True. Uh, and they're just fun to play with. There. <laughs> You're not wrong. No, but yeah, it, it, so many things could go wrong, but mm -hmm. they didn't. And so that was awesome to see. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. No, that's cool. So the, the last kind of, you know, debrief question for you guys, you th will we do this again? Do you guys think we'll do something like this again? Yeah, we're looking at large indoor places uh, for the fall and winter right yeah. now, because uh, I think the consensus from the church was, especially with us not being able to build quite yet, mm -hmm. but we better keep figuring out how to do this mm -hmm. together. And yeah, so that's right. uh, we're being innovative, creative, and mm -hmm. trying to still live within budget. It's a balancing act. Yes, it is. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to shift a little bit and uh, unpack a little bit of PT sermon. Uh, man, I appreciate Pastor Tom's ability to just adapt. <laughs> like He took his <laughs> sermon and just <laughs> wove it into so many different things and did such an incredible job with it. Um, but he, he talked a lot about purpose and... Um, and the question I want to unpack with you guys a little bit is why is purpose such a crucial part of the human experience in general? Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on this? Jay, go ahead, buddy. Start us out. Well, it's, it's, it's part of how God designed us. He designed mm -hmm. us to fulfill a purpose. Mm -hmm. And so um, when you're not or when you're searching or when you're being a loaf, maybe is, is a nice one, it, you, it, it, it's not comfortable. 
mm-hmm. right? You don't feel complete. Yeah. We are the type of creatures that are supposed to be on the move, acting, and we need direction. We need a place to go. And so I think at, at the very core, like it's crucial because it's just who we are. It's how we're designed. We're designed mm-hmm. to be acting for a purpose. Uh, so of course that's going to be, it's like, why, it's like asking why is food such a crucial part of experience? Well, because you will die if you don't have it. Yeah. And in the sense of purpose, like, well, human beings need meaning. We need significance. And we won't have that if we don't have purpose. So yeah. we'll die spiritually, psychologically, when we don't have that clear purpose. Purpose. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, as Jay said, we're created, you know, uh, in his image, he's a creator. So mm-hmm. we're created actually to create, like we're mm-hmm. created to do something, to do, work with our hands, to, yeah. you know, take, uh, take care of the earth and bring his kingdom. And so I, I feel like, you know, we all have, uh, Pastor John said, on purpose, for a purpose. We all actually have a calling that's in our DNA. And um, I think it's why we have an obsession in uh, the book I'm reading says that we actually have an addiction with progress because we, we think that, you know, we, we know we got it. We want to progress. Mm-hmm. We want to bring his kingdom here. We actually all secular or Christian, we all keep doing this. And it actually becomes sometimes our, our idol because we think mm-hmm. there's a comfort, a, a level of appeasement yeah. that will one day come there. And in fact, that that's through Christ. But I just I think we're created that way. So just echoing exactly what Jay said. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um it's kind of a follow-up to that, you know, outside of finding your purpose in God, so many people work to find purpose. Um, and, and, you know, that ends up being this crazy long journey of just being unsettled constantly. Mm-hmm. And so the, the follow-up is, you know, when you compare trying to find your purpose in the many options the yeah. world has to offer uh, versus the purpose we're created for, you know, what, why is there so much more freedom when we actually just live out the purpose that God has given us versus us yeah. trying to fill out all these other things. Like what kind of yeah. freedom comes with that uh, when your purpose is worship versus, you know, the other things. Yeah. Ahead, I, th- I think, you know, just maybe going back a step to that is there really, there are really two options mm-hmm. um, because everything uh, in modern psychology, positive psychology tells you like humans need purpose. Like, yeah, we can feel that, but like, you can measure that, right. That like it, it's a need. If you try to chase happiness, Mm-hmm. you will not get it. If you chase meaning and purpose, you'll get happiness as a byproduct. That's not speaking from the, I mean, that is also true, but I mean, that's <laughs> what, that's what, you know, the, the psychological research tells us. And so that has to lead you to inclusion. If you need purpose, mm-hmm. and I think we all feel that. And if <laughs> the aggregate data says that all humans need purpose, then there's two options. You either need purpose because it's a byproduct of undirected evolution and we are just meat we're just electricity going through a piece of meat in your skull <laughs> called your brain. That is all. And it's an evolutionary byproduct that uh, keeps our DNA going when we think we need to be designed to be having a purpose and it mm. makes us move forward and makes us chase progress, like Nate said. So that's option one. Yeah. Or option two is you need purpose because of what Jay said, because we're created in God's image and he designed us to have a purpose. And the first thing he does when he creates us is gives us a mission to rule and reign the earth and be fruitful and multiply. And, and so, I mean, that's it. Either the need for purpose is an illusion yeah, or the need for purpose is real. And so if the need for purpose is an illusion, you have nothing better than to make one up, but still knowing it's artificial anyway. Or if the need for purpose is real, we get to say, where does that come from? You know, Mm. which leads us to the truth of who God is and how he created us. And then we can say, okay, you made me for a purpose. I can find out what my purpose is as you've told me and actually created. I don't have to try and invent a purpose that's artificial, that, that I don't have to invent a purpose whose only purpose is to give me the feeling of meaning and purpose, but isn't actually real. Yeah. And so the freedom of following God's purpose in our lives is, is actually objectively real. It's a real purpose not a purpose we've made up to make us feel like we have a purpose. If, if that makes sense, mm. I'll let these guys talk about the content of that purpose. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I, I, I would say that to answer your, like the question of like, why, when do we fight freedom mm-hmm. yeah. and, and it, it's the, the, the bondage of the, you know, maybe the secular world purpose that is often self-focused. Mm-hmm. It's uh, selfish. It's whether it's for yeah. comforts or success or accomplishment or whatever. And so it's just a void. It's a vacuum that you'll never fill. And so I, I can recall mm-hmm. um, someone who they're still not a Christian, they're a faith five of mine, but they built their dream home. They had their kids. Everything was exactly as they imagined it. 
their husband was making lots of money, but they loved them and it was amazing life. They built it and they went, why am I so depressed? Mm. Yeah. yeah. I had finally accomplished my purpose. This is what I live yeah. for. Yeah. And it was left them found wanting. And this is the biblical worldview is a freedom in the upside down kingdom. There's freedom yes. in laying your life down. There's freedom in submitting to your husband, submitting mm -hmm. to your wife. There's freedom in giving more to others, giving away what you've been entrusted with. It's, it's opposite but there's freedom in it. So when you say there's freedom in, in worship, there's freedom in living out God's design mm -hmm. for you. And I think that's where people find their, their, their most other worldly purpose, at least in my own anecdotal experience is often self-serving. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I, I think about it when in the theory of design, like if there really is a designer mm -hmm. and a mm -hmm. thing that's designed, then when that thing that's designed is used, for the reason in which it was designed, then it flourishes. It does something beautiful. Mm -hmm. So for instance, a guitar. If you're trying to make beautiful music, because that's the reason a guitar exists, that's what it's defined, that's what it's designed for. And when you play it according to the laws of music, it creates beauty. Mm -hmm. You're when you know those notes, when you know how to execute them, you're free to make beautiful music that then brings beauty and encouragement and flourishing into other people's lives. Mm -hmm. And so if you just take that as a, as a, a metaphor or as an archetype and you put instead of the guitar, a human being, then it's the exact same. Like someone who's trying to play the guitar and not listening to their teacher and making horrible music is very frustrated. Mm -hmm. Like I'm trying so hard to make something beautiful and it sounds horrible. You get frustrated. Yeah. And the same is true. If you're working towards, like Nate just said, if you're working towards something you think is your purpose, and it's not really the purpose for humanity. It's, you're going to end frustrated. Mm -hmm. You're going to end unhappy. And so this is a big reason why when you actually do find uh, the purpose of which God has created human beings for and you're living into it, well, man, you feel good. Mm -hmm. Other people are affected. Your life, in other words, makes beautiful music, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you, I think when you have to create your own purpose, you evaluate the success of that purpose inwardly, like on how it makes you feel. Mm -hmm. So like when you're like trying to find your purpose, you evaluate if you've found your purpose or not based on how you feel, not actually like what you have accomplished or what God has accomplished through you out in the world. And like the part of the freedom, I think that comes from God's perfect that he gives us is it's outward focus. We don't always have to be obsessed of like, are all my feelings right? And did I, am I thinking is everything internal in my head? Right. And, get a little personal on this, but, um, I think that's something I've been really focusing on lately is like just the mantra of it's not about you. It's mm -hmm. not about you. And it's, there's a freedom. I think that comes in that where I'm like, it's not about you. So if I feel like crap, but my outward actions are what I'm supposed to be doing, I'm acting righteously. Then like, it is okay that I don't have all the right feelings that I want to have. And I don't have to obsess over what feelings I'm having on the inside. Um, because my purpose is external to myself and the purpose of my purpose is not to make me feel good. Mm. It's to accomplish what God wants to in the world because my purpose is to bring his kingdom come, not feel good, my yeah, kingdom, yeah, right, and yeah. not feel good while I'm doing it. Mm. And so there's a huge freedom in that where like when you're trying to live your own purpose, there's so much pressure to see, is it right? Is it good enough? Am I feeling good enough? And if I don't feel exactly the way I'm feeling, it must be because I'm not living out my purpose in the exact right way. And there's just so much pressure on yeah. you yeah. when like, when you can surrender, like Nate gave so many good examples where it's about others, mm -hmm. man, there's so much peace that comes in that. Cause you're just not even really thinking about yourself that much. And yeah, there's freedom in that. Absolutely. One of the things PT had talked about <clears throat> on Sunday, uh, as kind of a follow up to this purpose thing is that, you know, you can be a Christ follower and still not be living on purpose and just be mm -hmm. floating. Yeah. That you know, was the, the, the imagery he used of just floating, uh, not really going forward, not really going back, just kind of being, um, and that's not good and it's not healthy. What are some of the signs, like the practical signs you see to kind of be like, Oh, oh shoot, I am floating right now. What were, yeah. what are some of those indicators? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Nate. Yeah, that's good. Lack of spiritual disciplines, uh, mm -hmm. God's an idea and maybe someone you agree with, but not a relationship, like mm -hmm. you're not feeling yeah. like you're journeying yeah. it. Um, uh, maybe a failure to submit to the next step or not even asking what a next step would be like thinking, no, I'm kind of good. I'm doing yeah. checking the right boxes for now. Yeah. Um, I, I would call that floating in any relationship. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Marriages too. Yeah. Because they're crumbling around us here. And I'm watching it happen and go, they, they, these people are not investing. Mm-hmm. And I would mm-hmm. say these are simple investments that you would make in any relationship mm-hmm. that are required in a relationship with your creator as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ne- the language of next steps is really, really helpful. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I think Nate's right on that. It's like, what, what actually is the next step that you're working on? Or another a question you could ask yourself is, what is God working on in mm-hmm. me right now? Yeah. If you don't have an answer to that, you're floating. Yeah. You know, it's That's like, good. what is God doing in me to try to sanctify me further, to try to mm. more so invest in his kingdom, not necessarily my kingdom. If you don't have answers to those things or, or what are you, what are you growing in? What are you learning mm-hmm. about God, about yourself, about the world? If the answer to that is nothing, there's, you're most likely floating or also how is God using me in the world? How is he using me as his servant? Well, where am I serving? Again, if the answer you don't know, mm-hmm. again, you're probably floating. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah absolutely. You know, it's, uh, yeah, it's so interesting how easy it is to get caught up in that, uh, just the floating. Mm-hmm. You just get going into the rhythms of life and life just keeps going and you stop. And uh, I think one of the things that uh, I really liked about PT Sermon, he used that rope image <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, of eternity and now, right? And and I think that's one of the ways we stop ourselves from floating is to keep that in the forefront of our mind of we got like 80, 90, maybe 100 years if you're really good, you know, if your body's really good and can keep going. Um, but th- those years impact eternity. Like that's a forever thing. How do we keep that in the forefront of our minds as, as a way of keeping ourselves accountable to being on mission? What does it look like to do that? Well, um, how do we do it consistently? Maybe. Well, I think this Sunday is a great reminder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, when you, especially when y'all get to hear more details of those testimonies and mm-hmm. you know, you gave the example of Jesse's testimony. There's so many others where like, those ways that people were community to them Mm -hmm. were a big part in their, in their journey. And so it helps us remember the eternal perspective of like, no, it's important for me to participate with the Holy, the Holy Spirit sanctifying work in me so that I can continue to build his kingdom by like being, they give the example in your marriage in Mm -hmm. in all these different relationships, being the hands and feet that God needs you to be, because it actually could make a difference. Mm -hmm. And like, maybe you're floating will result in people being further from Christ because you weren't there. You weren't in a position to help spur them on in love and good works. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a really, the sun is a really positive reminder when you hear their stories of all the the seemingly little things. But if those people in their lives were not being obedient, like what if Chris and Deb Schatz weren't praying for the Hughes family? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We would have had four less baptisms. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. And then yep. they committed themselves to pray. And that's yeah. one of the many things that God used to bring them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Uh, it ties into the purpose part, but you know, the, how do you keep it at the forefront of your mind? Well, the question we keep asking when we ask about purpose is how do the needs of, how do my gifts mm, meet the needs good, of the people around me? Yeah. yeah. Like, don't overcomplicate it. You make it in this big thing where I got to start a sh- you know, some sort of yeah. special shoe company in India to save the, it, like, mm-hmm. maybe yeah. how do your current giftings mm-hmm. meet yeah. the needs of the people around you? And if we're asking that question more often, it would be at the forefront of our mind. And yeah. that's what that's Sunday good. was, Yeah, to bring it full circle. That yeah. was a, a beautiful example of people in our church, everyone asking, how do my gifts meet the needs of New Hope at Charles Daly Park? And mm-hmm. then they showed up and did it. It was beautiful <laughs> it, to see. It was. But it that's, was. that's Fence my skills, encouragement. When you're asking the question about purpose, yeah. when asking the question about purpose yeah. is to ask that basic, that's basic question. Love that. Yeah, I think my answer to this will tie into this Sunday, actually. Faith Fi Sunday. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. want to always keep urgency, keep the uh, yeah, keep the idea that our actions today affect eternity. Make sure you got Faith Fives yes. in mm-hmm. your life. Yeah. Make sure you're still rubbing shoulders with the lost and having mm-hmm. your heart broken for the lost. If you do that, mm-hmm. you should never forget about the impacts of your work now for for eternity. Mm-hmm. So keep keep having a Faith Five, and if you don't have them, find one. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you what, they're right across the street from where you live. So you <laughs> yeah. don't have to look too far. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. And uh, to our listeners, thank you so much for uh, tuning in. If this is the first time you're checking out the podcast or if you're new to New Hope, I'd encourage you to jump on our website or our app and uh, fill that connect card because we would love to connect with you. And we'll talk to you next time on Digging Deeper.